Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. Uh, today I will continue my discussion on perfect secrecy. In the previous segment, we talked about the foundation of Bayes theorem and uh, conditional probabilities. Today we will have an opportunity to apply that. Um, instead of directly talking about perfect secrecy, uh, I, I thought of taking a problem and show to you uh, why the following scheme is not perfect. And then I will talk about how um, perfect secrecy can be achieved with by by modifying this a little bit okay there's a small problem in this in this uh, problem uh, we will fix that later first let's read the problem together is the following encryption scheme perfectly secret okay uh, do not worry uh, if you don't know the definition of perfect secrecy i will redefine it quickly for you um the message space is either zero or one so any message that you send like alice sending to bob for example um, message can be either zero or one. Okay. Uh, the key though in this case is made of either number zero, one, or two. So key is uh, uniformly selected. One particular key is uniformly selected. That means each key, uh, a key can be zero or one or two, equally likely. Okay. That's the meaning of uniformly choosing something. Okay, so now let's talk about the encryption scheme. The encryption scheme, enc function, takes the key and the message. All it does is uh, it adds the key and the message and, and performs mod two, okay? And that means the answer can be either zero or one. So the cyberspace, we can confirm that the cyberspace will be zero or one, right? Because we're doing a mod two. The decryption takes the key and the ciphertext and subtracts the key from the ciphertext. If we call this a C, right? Uh, C is made of K and M. So if we subtract K, a K, K will cancel out, so you get back M. That's the idea. Okay, so let's talk about the scheme and why is this um, perfect secret or not perfect secret? Okay, that's the question um, we need to answer. So, in order to show something is perfectly secret, what is that we need to show? We need to be able to argue that suppose the message space is denoted by m, right? That's what we have been uh, given, and uh, you say the message is m given that the cipher text is c. The same as the message is M. What does it really mean by uh, this statement? This is the core of the uh, um, perfect secrecy definition, right? You observe some ciphertext C uh, as an attacker, as an E, for example. And uh, E wants to calculate what is the probability that this could have been coming from a particular message M. Okay. If the ciphertext doesn't re reveal anything, Okay, about the message M, whatever probability that uh, E computes on the left hand side is same as the probability that M is equal to M. Okay, that means um, knowing the ciphertext informally, what it means is that knowing the ciphertext is not helping E. Okay, that's E is the eavesdropper in this case. That's, that's the meaning of this, right? From, from a technical point of view, we could say M and the C are uh, independent. If, if, if that condition satisfies, then we say it's uh, then we say this particular um, scheme is perfectly uh, secure scheme. Okay, so let me re uh, rephrase this more clearly. To prove something is perfectly secret, we need to prove this statement for all message m and for all ciphertext c, the probability of m equal to m given c is equal to c is same as probability of m equal to m. If this is violated for some c, then we know that uh, this particular scheme is not perfectly secure, okay? So let's take this example and reason about the correctness. Can we prove that this is satisfied or not, okay? Let's uh, uh, do a simple table analysis. Very simple, I will convert a table out of this particular encryption scheme and then we will talk about uh, perfect secrecy or not perfect secrecy, okay? Uh, let me create a same space here. This is my message, right? This is my message can be either zero or one, but the key can be zero, one, or two, right? So if the key, this is the key side, this is key, okay? And this is the message. This direction is the message direction. Okay. This is the message direction, okay? So what is uh, X, the definition of encryption? Encryption is, just add these two things and do, do a mod two. So zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one, one plus one is two, but two is not allowed, two mod two is zero. This is zero, 
right? And this is one. Hopefully this notation is clear. Key can be zero, message can be zero. The cybertext will be zero in that case. Key can be uh, one, message can be zero. In that case, the ciphertext will be one. Key can be two, message can be zero. In that case, ciphertext can be zero. Okay, this is basically what this definition of the encryption function is. We just uh, wrote it in a table. And now let's do some simple calculation. Uh, let's measure. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'll keep this aside for me and I will do some basic calculation. Now I'm going to ask the question, what is the probability that message is zero given that the ciphertext is zero? Okay. So we, we will use Bayes theorem that we learned earlier in the previous segment. Okay. It's nothing but this into this divided by divided by probability of C is equal to zero. Okay. How do we do that now? We need to compute three probabilities. We need to compute these, these, these three things. What is the probability of, okay, let me put this aside. Now I'll create one more uh, table for, what is the probability that M is zero? Very simple. Message M is uni can be either zero or one. They didn't tell us uh, anything. So we can assume it is uniform. Um, we will say M equal to, uh, probability of M equal to zero is half. Okay. All right, we, we are done with that part. What about the probability of, um, okay, I'll keep this as well here. Next thing we need to compute is probability of C is equal to zero, okay, which is nothing but, now let, let's look at the table here. What, what, what are the possible scenarios that can lead to the ciphertext being zero? The key can be zero, right? And message can be zero. In that case, the ciphertext will be zero. Or, or means plus in probability. Um, or key can be uh, one and can, can it be one? Key, can key be one? Uh, key can be one, but then the message has to be one, okay? Or, what is the other possibility? Key can be two and message can be zero okay all right which we can easily compute now this is nothing but k key can be zero and because these two are independent events right message is chosen first and then comes the key and they, they are usually independent so we can assume independence okay this is just a regular simple distribute uh, um, independent prop independent probability okay now we can quickly fill up this since, since the key is uniformly chosen and the message is also uniformly chosen, we have three, all the three things are essentially same. So three times one by um, key has three elements, right? So because key can be either zero or one or two. So this is what we have, okay? Which is I think about one by two, okay? So we have found out that the probability of C being zero is half. Okay, uh, which should not be a surprise for you. If you look at this table carefully, C occurs two times, um, Z, either zero, zero combination or one, one combination, um, or three times rather, sorry. Um, zero, zero, one, one, uh, two, zero. Similarly, one also occurs three times, right? Zero, one, uh, one, zero, and two, one. Therefore, um, we could say probability of C equal to zero is half, okay. So we're done with that part now. What is the remaining part we need to do? We need to do the probability of um, this part we have to solve. Probability of C equal to zero given M equal to zero. Okay, how do we do that? Uh, that's not difficult to do either. Okay. So well, all we are uh, going to do now is look at the table that I have uh, drawn earlier. So we look at the first column because the first column says M equal to zero, right? That means we just focus on the first column. Uh, how many, uh, rows have uh, ciphertext to be zero. That means we have either key can be zero. This can be same as saying the key has to be zero or the key has to be two. That because those are the only two possibilities that can uh, lead the ciphertext to be zero given that the message is zero. Okay, so either the key is zero or the key is two. Okay, makes sense, right? Because that's 
those are the only two possible keys that can lead you to this scenario that the message is zero given that the given that the message is zero that means the first column you want you're looking for the ciphertext to be zero in that case uh, now because of the uniform distribution for the key space this is nothing but two third okay so we found out all the components we need now we can go and plug it into this equation okay so we we will I'll, I'll place it here this is this is two third so now we can compute the the thing that we need to compute is probability of m equal to zero given c equal to zero is nothing but uh, we we already found out the first component is two third and the second component is uh, half okay which means uh, two and two will get cancelled out so you get um, a one third on the numerator okay divided by divided by half okay or you can you also cancel half and half that's much more clever and easier okay so half and half cancel out so we will be end up we will be ending ending up with two third okay so what we, what we are learning here is that we found out that what is the probability that the message is zero given that the ciphertext is zero suppose you observe the the communication channel between alice and bob you saw ciphertext c to be zero you can be more confident that the message is actually zero because the message being zero is given is coming up to be probably two third, which makes sense if you pay close attention to the first column. You saw ciphertext to be zero, right? Ciphertext zero happens. Um, what is the probability that the message is zero? Message zero uh, has two times, uh, uh, at least two rows are there, right? There are two rows that can ha handle that. So therefore, we can just simply say probability of m equal to zero given c equal to zero after after I filled up all the components i got 2 by 3 but now that is clearly not equal to not equal to probability of m being zero because that is the definition of perfect secrecy that means which is basically half right that means this given scheme is not perfectly secure given ciphertext c equal to zero um, our estimation of the probability that the message is zero uh, is two third, which means the attacker knows more which direction to guess given the ciphertext, either zero or one, right? And he is guessing that it must be more likely to be zero than one, uh, which is not good because the ciphertext should not re reveal any information about which message was sent, okay, or which message was likely to have been sent, okay. Okay, so so. So what we are learning here is that this particular scheme is not uh, perfectly secure. So that's the main um, point of this video. So how do you make this per perfectly secure? Um, I leave that as an exercise for you. All you have to do is delete the second, for example, if you delete number two from the key space, um, you will see that uh, probability of m equal to zero given c equal to zero is half. Therefore, um, this particular scheme you have to do the same for other combinations as well you can confirm that that, that will become perfect secret okay all you have to do is get rid of the um, get rid of this two if you get rid of this two you'll be okay the key space two because the, that extra row on here right okay, creates a problem um, okay so what we learned is that um, even though your ciphertext may give you an uh, impression that the probability of c equal to zero is half that means uh, it's probability of c equal to one will be also half it doesn't really mean that the scheme is perfectly secure okay and for perfect secrecy what we need is that probability of a message being m equal to m okay what is the perfect secrecy definition that basically means that messages and ciphertext are independent observing the ciphertext doesn't reveal anything new about the plain text okay that's basically uh, what it means informally